let us take a look at the X in a Box ecosystem used inside a CubeSat. First, a 30 second primer on CubeSats. A CubeSat is a satellite measuring 10 by 10 by 10 centimeters or approximately 4 inch cubed. A CubeSat usually comprises a frame or structure, solar panels, antennas, and other exterior components, the inside electronics or payload. These electronics typically conform to the PC-104 standard like in this module. The frame can be acquired ready-made or it can be 3D printed. Aerospace qualified material now exists and 3D print ready CubeSat models are easily available on the internet. Add your electronics to the frame and you have yourself a CubeSat. X in a Box is an ecosystem made up of electronic modules that we call X chips. The vision is to give students access to build Internet of Things devices, satellites, and other solutions for the fourth industrial revolution without the requirement of a lab or instruments, eliminating time-consuming wiring and soldering. At the same time, we wish to translate typical consumption-heavy electronics building to a reusable and environment-friendly system with higher focus on programming and less focus on mechanized jobs. Let us look at an X-in-the-box powered CubeSat with the end in mind. We are focusing on the electronics, making sure that we conform both with the electrical as well as the mechanical CubeSat standards. This CubeSat in front of me has three layers. It is connected to an external power source using this IP11, and we connected two screens which are external for now as they will be detached before the final build and launch. The CubeSat is running using a Wi-Fi based core, this CW02, which is the onboard computer in this setup. This allows us not only to use these screens, but also to send the data to a dashboard of choice as one would for any Internet of Things device. Here we have used all things talk, but it could be OKDo, OK UbiDots, Microsoft Azure, and many more. If I use my finger to heat up this weather sensor, SW01, we can see the temperature rises on both screens and on the dashboard. Let us disconnect the power and screens and look at how this CubeSat was built. We have three layers. We could connect the X chips in any order, but to stay with the CubeSat taxonomy, this first stack is the payload layer. Here we have the weather sensor SW01 measuring temperature, humidity, and barometric pressure. The SG33 is the volatile organic compound sensor that also gives us a CO2 reading. The SL01 is an ultraviolet and ambient light sensor calculating a UV index similar to that reported on weather channels. We have added our CW02 core to this layer as it is just one X chip, although you would typically have your onboard computer in a separate layer. The next stack is our attitude determination subsystem. We have a GPS receiver here, the SN01, giving us plenty of data including latitude, longitude, and altitude. The SI01 is an IMU, an inertial measurement unit comprising an accelerometer, a gyroscope, and a magnetometer. In this layer, we have added a second SL01, or light sensor, to simulate a sun sensor. Because we already have another SL01 in our circuit, we need to use this X chip, the AI10, to change the second SL01's communication address. The last stack is not in use in this setup, but included to demonstrate a comms layer. It consists of two radios, connected with two different variants of dipole antennas. These radios are both using the 915 MHz spectrum, which is license-free in the USA. Here we are using the AI01 multiplexer to allow the user to use the radios independent of one another. We are also experimenting with the RS02, which is the STX3 based Global Star Satellite Radio. Internally, we call the OC01 the burn wire module, allowing the user remotely or programmatically to burn a nichrome wire, which can be used to deploy antennas or solar panels. Let us look at some other options that may be of interest depending on which context the CubeSat is being deployed. The IP11 we use to power our CubeSat also contains a digital Coulomb counter, which is a very accurate way to determine the power budget of a CubeSat. On this separate stack, I have included the PB04 dual AA battery power module, which can power this circuit for a balloon flight, but not for years in space. 
It has an analog circuit to measure current and voltage, yet the XT10 has a standalone Coulomb counter, giving a more accurate reading. The MD01 is a spacer with no function other than adding redundancy and stability to the circuits. Each of the connectors provides both power and signal, so any one of them can fail and the circuit will still work. The individual X chips are too small to bend, thereby avoiding the copper lanes to snap. At the same time, the connectors will absorb shocks and vibrations. This robustness has been proved both by having eight of these X chips flying on 41 satellites in April 2019, using the same connectors, and by having three satellites falling from a 100,000 foot high altitude balloon flight when the parachute didn't unfold. The satellites were still running at recovery. Here is a selection of other power-related X chips. The PU02 allows us to power the circuit with a micro USB power supply and the IP32 with a USB-C source. The PL01 is a LiPo battery X chip and the PL02 is similar yet allows solar panels to be connected. The PS01 is a solar-powered SuperCap X chip giving 10 seconds of power to a Wi-Fi connected Internet of Things device enough to upload a measurement once an hour. Let us move from electrical power to CPU power. Instead of using the CW02, we could consider the Raspberry Pi Zero, here depicted with an artificial intelligence computer, allowing the CubeSat to do more interference in situ. The SC02 is a real-time clock, allowing the exact time to be known if a GPS is not available for spaceflight. A standard Raspberry Pi can be used with a bridge as shown here. The same principle goes for the Minnow board and any other single board computer using the i96 board's interface. The MX chip and the micro bit can also be connected. Many CubeSat developers would probably consider the Beagle Bone Bridge, since that single board computer is a favorite in the CubeSat industry. For that reason, we are developing a Pocket Beagle X chip, the CX01, seen here with a Cortex M0, the CC03, and a Cortex M4, CC04, as well as our favorite, the CW01 Wi Fi X chip. There are plenty of other payload options, like the SL06, which is a gesture sensor but also recognizes colors, the SG34 particle matter sensor, the SL19 infrared temperature sensor and we are experimenting with an HD camera sensor on the SV51. Here I have two other weather sensors and two other IMUs. The OC05 is a servo controller and the SX02 is an ADC for reading analog sensors such as this thermistor. And finally, we have low power relays such as the OC03, high power relays such as the OC11, and other gas sensors such as the SG03 alcohol sensor. X in a box is not a walled garden concept, illustrated here with this IX01, allowing you to breadboard and thereby interface between X chips and traditional electronics. Whether you use the CubeSat in the classroom exclusively or fly your CubeSat on a party, hot air or high altitude balloon mission, onboard spacecraft such as Blue Origin's New Shepard, Virgin Galactic Spaceship 2 or the International Space Station or get lucky enough to launch it into space, Building a CubeSat is easy. X in a Box allows you to realize the IKEA effect, feeling proud of building and programming your own satellite from scratch.